Hello, 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 guys. Welcome to this new edition of Mind Podcast. We are back. We are invigorated. We are ready to talk politics again, talk world politics, global affairs, everything under the sun. Uh, we took a little bit of a break after elections and stuff, but we are back to cover more politics. And I guarantee you, this is first part of a many part series that we're going to be doing on um, a couple of parts on American elections before with predictions and states and then post analysis and a lot more about on Maharashtra, um, Indian elections, Indian sports, so much more. And together joining me, old friend of the podcast, political analyst, commentator, um, and um, a person on this side of the hemisphere or this side of the world with me, Mohan Joshi. Hi, Mohan. How are you doing? Thanks, Adit. Pleasure to join once again. My God, does it feel in middle of uh, in the middle of uh, like thick and thin in the middle of election season or not? What are your initial thoughts about the election election uh, time in America? Yeah, it's been like a crazy election, uh, just like the past few cycles. I mean, if you think of it, we had a candidate dropping out, which is unprecedented. Uh, not one, but two assassination attempts. Mm-hmm. and like one presidential debate and the second one was cancelled i mean we are we are in this situation where there are the candidates are doing more podcasts than we have presidential debates i think that's the way for going forward that we'll have i there think have, next time we'll have more more podcasts there have been more presidential candidates this year than there have been presidential debates two from the democratic side <laughs> and then one from the republican side i uh, i should actually tweet that that is this has been some election right yeah um, you know, initial thoughts, um, this was initially when Mr. President Biden and um, former President Trump were going um, head to head. I thought this was President Trump's election to lose because President Biden was initially polling well, but then this first debate was not very good. Um, and then he slowly, 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 his graph started tapering. Then you had the attempt on Mr. Trump's life, the most horrible thing that happened to him. And, um, you know, his popularity soared um, uh, owing to a bunch of reasons, right? One, one, I would not attribute it to one or two effects. It was, you know, they could have been catalysts, not the sole reasons. But bottom line is that was he was at his peak in July. Then, you know, I don't remember the last time this happened in American politics when a sitting president drops out in middle of a campaign after he was declared mm-hmm. a candidate. The vice president gets nominated without a primary. Um, mm-hmm. He has not done particularly well in primaries before, and um, Democratic Party knows the risk. Yet they nominated, um, and then she actually surprisingly did quite well. She did well. She held herself in the debate. She polled well. She was far ahead in the polls. And then in the last three weeks, former President Trump just has completely reversed the election. And that's what we are here to discuss. The seven swing states. That's what the first part of the talk podcast is going to talk about. What is happening in the seven swing states and what is the craziness that has happened? And I'm going to show you uh, the change in polls. Uh, and Mohal, while I'm show, sharing the screen, uh, give us your analysis, please. Yeah, I think you covered it well. Uh, back in June, like uh, Trump was a favorite uh, against Biden. And post debate, like the mental acuity issues in the Democratic side were accentuated, like they could no longer be dismissed as a Republican conspiracy. So they had to, and it, it went like it nosedived after that. I mean, there were like several gaffes also by Biden. One of the famous ones was uh, calling like uh, Zelensky at the NATO summit as President Putin. And I mean, at that point, I knew that he was kind of cooked and I thought like at least in 30 days he's going to drop out and I mean they had to do the switch before the uh, the 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 August uh, convention the democratic convention otherwise they would have another headache on their hands and I mean Biden didn't go quietly into the night as they say like he did fight and I think there were a lot of op-eds like there was the op-ed by uh, George Clooney I think which and like many Biden staffers still think that he was pushed out by the Obama and the Pelosi's. Oh, yeah. of, I mean, at the end, they were like leaking details about like him. So, so I mean, and then the switch happened. There was a lot of momentum with Kamala Harris. Uh, uh, the initial burst of enthusiasm has all worn out. There was another burst uh, of support for her when she did 
particularly well in the debate against trump uh yeah. and i think that was probably the high point and after that more reality set in i mean lot of the as they say the kamla curious voters have not have bit sawed on sawed on her and uh, this is where we are at today. so where is the thing guys look at this right this is what i want to show you 48 45 on july 22nd august 5th 47 47 i think okay. that's the week of the convention no, 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 right but yeah. look, this is labor day weekend 49 yeah. 46 a 3% mm-hmm. lead is plenty along with leads in swing states for kamala to come and slowly slowly we are now less than 1% now mm-hmm. i want you to focus that there right because that less than 1% is also a very interesting statistic now when you filter it by national polls right this is this mm-hmm. is this harris 3 harris 3 this is two weeks ago mm-hmm. harris is pretty much leading except a couple now we mm-hmm. come to a week trump is leading now by one plus three slowly slowly he's getting there too the one mm-hmm. this is the new york times page and here is the big one as we get closer and closer the gap gets narrower and narrower and narrower and i am mm-hmm. i am only focusing on the uh, highlighted ones because those are the quote unquote credible posters a lot of them are republican and although they won't say it many and i don't know which one is which but some of them are democratic sponsored <laughs> yeah but as you can see cnn new york times cnn all saying even uh, emerson college again saying even right um, you, and then you have today's polls ipsos who was saying plus 4 when everyone was saying even is now saying plus 1 right mm-hmm. and atlas intel who was saying even at that time is now saying plus 2 even mm-hmm. you have an economist which is not rated terribly highly in terms mm-hmm. of polling it's saying plus 2 so mm-hmm. bottom line is there is not a single credible poll that is giving um, harris plus 3 and i, I think uh, atlas intel and uh, tip insights i think they were the the two closest to the actual results in the last two polls That's i think right. uh, tip was the closest in 2020 and maybe atlas intel i don't remember like the details but like they were the closest and they are also like plus 1 plus 2 for harris and mind you like hillary lost by 2.1% so the, the the popular refrain is that she has to win by at least 3% in the popular vote margin just mm-hmm. because of the amount of votes that are in california and new york mind you they are still shifting a bit red this time that's yeah. a separate discussion we'll have later on but unless she wins it by 3 or at least two and a half then she would be in trouble like i mean and biden did win it by four and a half and mind you he just lost by 65000 votes that's across right. like four states and i'm going to talk about that i was showing arizona yeah. for our folks in a second and then we'll go mm. to the numbers but sure. I- Uh, Mohan, and this I want to give you a shout out and kudos because you've been calling this for the last four years. Um, it was very popular to call Ohio and Florida as swing states. Mm-hmm. Mohan has been saying that from 2020 at least <laughs> before yeah. that Ohio is a deep purple state. I remember he called it. Now it's firmly turned into leaning red. But this time Ohio and Florida are so confirmed in the Republican column. that the republicans are spending probably more money trying to defeat ted cruz oh, sorry the democrats are spending more money trying to defeat ted cruz in texas in a senate seat than they ha- are spending in florida or um, ohio i mean it is unbelievable those are the states that um, mr obama carried yeah and then even just two years ago in the midterms their their governor uh, divine i think he won by like 15 or 20 points like and the funny part is except jd vance who's a vice presidential nominee he just won by 7 or it's a vastly underperformed all the other Re- republican statewide races in 2022 mm-hmm. so yeah i mean if like and and let's say we just imagine if you're calling 7 to 8 point win as a underperformance and everybody is winning by 15 to 20 to i think it's just i think at this point you can almost say that uh uh florida and ohio are like red states uh i'm i'm I expect i think both of them will be double digit margins this time mind you though the incumbency has a factor so the senate race which we can talk later on uh the the senate race is kind of a toss up in some pollsters mind because all the senate republican candidates like morino is running uh, running well behind sherrod brown so that's still a toss up but yeah other than that i mean everything is deep red out there 
That's right. So I want everyone to see this map real quick. And because, you know, it's very important to know when we talk about states and stuff, a lot of people are not sure what is going on. So this is first I'm going to go to uh, Brian, uh, uh, Brian Clear polling RCP and their predictions. But the reason is I'm not endorsing the predictions. It just kind of shows the map. But then we can play around and show um, what's going on with the situation. This is this is the this is the map as it stands currently, which most pollsters seem to agree. Um, the Harris and Walls have 226 electoral votes potentially that they could win. Yeah. 219 for Trump and J.D. Vance, and 93 toss-ups. Which are those seven states? Georgia, North Carolina, Pennsylvania, Michigan, Wisconsin, Arizona, and Nevada. Okay. Now let's visualize paths to power for either candidate what are the easiest paths to power what is the what is the easiest path to power for trump so for trump is basically north carolina georgia and pennsylvania which gets up to exactly 270 correct but exactly to 270 you need 270 to win but he would also like arizona because arizona sure. brings him comfortably home and right now arizona is probably his polling plus four amongst all the four swing states Arizona is is, is polling is average is the highest and Arizona yeah I mean yeah has been a Republican state it has swung either way but it's reasonably Republican especially when John McCain was around right? I mean it's the safest uh Trump state like I would say right at this yeah. point on the on the other flip flip side if uh, Kamala Harris has to win she has to get Pennsylvania she has to get Michigan she has to definitely get Wisconsin and then yeah. she uh, and that gets her to 270. So right. that's her easiest path. I mean, technically you can get a combination of any four states to go to 270, mm -hmm. but for Trump, it's Georgia, North Carolina, Pennsylvania, the Eastern most three states. Mm -hmm. And for her, it's the Rust Belt states, which is Wisconsin, Michigan, and Pennsylvania, which is the easiest uh, combination, which exactly gets to 270. Exactly. Now here is the kicker, uh, guys. Trump has almost sealed Arizona and Georgia. I know they're trying their best, but you can see in Arizona, his lead is now plus 2.5. And that usually we've seen it bumps up. Georgia, the lead is again 2.4. I think that lead should probably go up a little bit uh, for Mr. Trump. So I think he will probably, uh, North Carolina is going to be a bit of a fight, we thought. But then it seems like Ms. Harris has pulled a lot of her resources. But let's, just for the sake of calculations, assume North Carolina goes to um, Ms. Harris and Trump picks up Pennsylvania. If that happens, then Trump can seal the seal the election yeah. with Nevada. That's what the the people in Nevada, it's a dream scenario, right? That if North Carolina goes to her and Trump picks up Pennsylvania, then everything depends on the silver state, which is Nevada. Correct. And now there is another hypothetical scenario. Trump, what if he picks up New Hampshire? If he picks up New Hampshire, it's still not enough to um, uh, and uh, Miss Harris picks up this, then then it's a 269-269 tie. <laughs> if that happens, and guys, this is absolutely possible. If you don't believe me, go to New Hampshire in 2016 and see how close Mr. Trump got. It yeah, he won by 0.4%. Correct. So it could happen. George Bush actually won New Hampshire in 2000. And this would be exactly like the TV show Weep where um, each side is trying to get um, electoral ballots and stuff. So the easiest, you know, jokes apart, the easiest, let's just give this to the Democrats as, as you know, it's been the easiest path to the power for Mr. Trump is winning Pennsylvania, New, uh, North Carolina, Georgia, and Arizona. Mm -hmm. Now, last time when he became the president, he also won Michigan and Wisconsin. If mm -hmm. that happens, he's comfortably at 306. Um, there is a chance where right now Nevada, the way it's closed, this is probably the outermost threshold for Mr. Trump. I yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, yeah, that would be uh, like if he sweeps all the seven states, he gets to 312, you know. 312, right. And that is the thing. Miss Harris, I don't see um, her winning Arizona or Georgia. So the most uh, optimistic outlook for uh, Kamala Harris, would, Vice President Harris, would be getting these these states. And if you get these states, you are looking at 292, 246. And that is assuming you get North Carolina. 
which is a very mm-hmm. difficult state for the, a democrat to win pres- in the presidential election even though they have a very unpopular governor there who is likely to lose right so if you give i think and we'll go state by state in the polls but right now if miss harris was if kamala harris were to be the president of united states it'll be a narrow victory where she scrapes to i would say 280 or 290 and if mr trump were to come to power it will be relatively comfortably he has a chance to get to 312 but more yeah. likely than not it will be you know 2, 290 for sure yeah. but yeah. harris for her 290 is going to be a, um, a a big outlier would you agree uh yeah i mean north carolina the uh, as you said the, the the republican governor candidate is deeply unpopular uh the incumbent governor is a democrat who's term limited so mm-hmm. it should be like a kind of a, like a 10 15 point margin win uh for him so yeah I, but i broadly agree with your assessment that kamala harris if she wins it could be in the 280s to 290s while trump could reach anywhere from 290 to 312 uh, and maybe if you include new hampshire as a complete shocker than 316 but yeah i mean 300 to 310 might not be the worst like okay. a midpoint of an average so then let's go state by state right we'll sure. do, and then what we'll do is mohan we'll keep we'll maybe i mean initially my vision was two parts or something but maybe given how fast the election is changing or something maybe we'll uh, we'll we'll do another one like we'll do short 30 40 minute episodes giving you the latest what is happening so maybe we'll you know this will be by the time i guess people will see this it will be like wednesday uh, i mean th- sorry thursday night or something america time but then we'll keep we'll keep on updating you throughout the weekend with another episode and then maybe we'll do a short preview before you know that mm-hmm. what is what mm-hmm. our final poll saying so let's go state by state so let's talk about arizona right mm-hmm. who is leading the polls in arizona um if you uh, more if you want to give a little bit of a history while i uh, while i show the poll yeah so arizona has been uh, mostly a republican state especially in the george bush years mm-hmm. even when obama was uh, very popular he hasn't been able to uh, crack arizona in hillary in 2016 he did make some visits in the end and sh- they thought like arizona was in the grass but it wasn't uh, until 2020 I believe the last uh, Democrat who won it was probably Bush, not at Bush, sorry, I mean uh, Clinton in uh, 92, or I, I, I don't recall if 96 they won or not, but it was a quite a long time before that. So it's a deep Republican state. Mm-hmm. The Arizona GOP has been unpopular, also their stance on abortion and uh, their down ballot candidates like Carrie Lake have been, who have been doing election denialism. so it has been i mean since mccain left so last time he angered uh, trump angered the Mc, uh, the mccain supporters with lot of his comments and i think that contributed him to losing narrowly i believe it was like 10000 11000 vote margin so but this time uh, the gop has registration edge and i mean if you can bring up the map also I mean, it's all about Maricopa in the end, right? No, no, but Because... I want to talk a little bit before you go into the sure, map. Sure, sure, sure. Yeah. Look at this. <clears throat> all the polls about two weeks before were saying that Arizona. I, I'm talking about again. I'm talking about the um, uh, the dark polls, right? The bolded polls, which are like mm-hmm. the terrible pollsters, right? New York Times was mm-hmm. giving it by six. Um, these guys were giving it by two. Emerson College was calling it mm-hmm. by two. Narrow victory. Mm-hmm. uh then again it was you saw even and plus but, but yeah but what you what but, we see is a consistent and durable lead right that's the thing no no thing. but that's what i'm saying now you get to this week except for one poll by cnn that is also showing a close there is not a single poll that is showing not a single credible poll that is showing any uh, uh trail lead for uh, kamala harris in fact data orbital and atlas intel are showing a lead of plus 4 and plus 8 and mm-hmm. you can see that over here that it was they were tied in august 30th and look at the gap mm-hmm. now it's a plus 3 to plus 4 for president trump he's almost mm-hmm. at 50% you know mm-hmm. mm-hmm. so yes now go ahead <laughs> what would you say yeah so i mean if you bring up the map i mean we can see that it's all about maricopa after all right that's where i think uh, i think 60% of the votes probably are 60 to 70% so right. uh i mean this and nevada they have like this big large urban counties and mm-hmm. i think the growth of the suburbs 
where a lot of the college educated population has become antagonistic to trump i think and also the mccain republicans in 2020 they were like upset with uh, uh trump because his constant attacks on the now uh, late uh, senator uh, john mccain i think that created a chasm like which could not be filled by the arizona gop and i think that's why trump paid the price in 2020 i mean obviously we had pandemic and a lot of other extraneous factors but i think this would be uh that the arizona uh, sorry the trump is in a very uh, good shape i mean also remember like this is a border state and the like the they're like i think 8 to 10 million undocumented immigrants has created a lot of strain on the uh, border states like arizona so the conditions are ripe for it to be flipped back to the republican column this time round right exactly and that's what i want to that's what i want to show so this is how 2020 arizona was where biden won barely as you can see by what 11000 less than 11000 or almost 10000 votes right yeah yeah now there is the lead yes these there is there is this minor lead that mr biden has but this is the big one maricopa county mm-hmm. is the big thing right mm-hmm. you he has a lead of um, you know this typically goes republican like 52 48 yeah. he flipped it to 50 40 48 and that's what swept changed the election 50000 yeah. yeah. in maricopa county essentially yeah i mean uh... yeah that's what the the game is and i mean obviously he ran up the margins in the rural district uh, rural districts but even like the 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 below maricopa the the county which is tucson in the no the one above it yeah the P- pima county also like you see there yeah, is like a quite a bit of yeah so that creates a big delta like which is hard to overcome because you're not enough rural votes for you to overcome that margin you know mm-hmm. and so that's why it's very important for him so um so that settles arizona tell talk a little bit about georgia what do you think about georgia so georgia is like one of the like fastest fastest growing suburbs in like the greater atlanta area so i think the same the influx of a uh, lot of migrants especially the college educated uh, folks and i think the the explosion in the college educated voter population created a uh, uh trouble for trump which he barely lost by 12000 under 12000 votes mm-hmm. so it's the mostly the atlantas the philadelphias like they, they didn't change much from 2016 to 2020 what happened was that the suburbs where the white collar p- folks were like turned off by trump and uh, they caused uh, I- issues so yeah i mean if you i don't know if you can pull up ballotopedia we can uh, look up like uh, individual shares where i think the gwinnett county uh, and i forget the names of but the the counties around atlanta they are all like light blue now years ago i mean georgia was a republican state and i believe the last time it would have voted was in the again the Clint, clinton years where mm-hmm. georgia would have voted for a democrat so biden had like changed the i mean the sun belt uh, the democrats had outperformed quite a bit in 2020 versus the uh, at least the 21st century historical right. terms you know mm-hmm. no absolutely but let's let's look at it this way right that where what do you think changed why why what what happened what was different this time than last time uh i think it's like the it's like more about the economy like in most of these states and also it's returning to the mean like the uh, the 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 red red roots i mean the the republican roots of what the state is used to be i mean uh, also remember last time they had uh, two senate races which were highly competitive and both went to runoffs mm-hmm. so a lot of people think that uh, rafael warnock like the 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 incumbent senator from georgia yes, not being on the poll this time might hurt the black turnout a little bit and in the early voting so far the black turnout has been below 30% so which doesn't bode well for democrats because they need a higher black turnout and, the, and some people are speculating and this is complete speculation that the absence of rafael warnock might be a drag on the overall democratic turnout which might help uh, uh trump to flip the state back to the republican column in 2024 correct so the <clears throat> if i were to just show real quick and i have the cnn map pulled up here that this is what the this is how the uh, georgia 
uh, Georgia areas looked, right? Mm -hmm. so you have, you have uh, uh, the Atlanta area that was mm -hmm. essentially putting for Biden, the Cobb County, Fulton County. Yeah, Fulton, Gwinnett. County, they were going yeah. massively. And Trump was getting all these uh, Republican rural votes and stuff. Savannah and all were like 50-50 areas for mm -hmm. uh, Biden. But I think right here, these suburbs around Columbus and these suburbs around Augusta are traditionally Republican, but they turn into scarlet, I would say not deep red, and yeah. you know yeah. all, these, all these small small counties, right? Thousand votes here, thousand votes there. But yeah. What is this thousand votes? But these thousand votes is what won Mr. Biden the the state. Eleven thousand votes, twelve thousand votes, twelve thousand yeah. votes. Is all it took. So you, if Mr. Trump drives up the margin here or gets a few more, like 10, 5, 10 percent more votes, mm -hmm. that's mm -hmm. it. And look at the uh, what he what. Um, uh, Mohan was talking about this is the Senate runoff, right? The margins were even uh, margins were more in the Senate runoff, and then uh, Mr. Warnock had even bigger margins, like a hundred thousand. So, like even even in that election, you saw that uh, Wa Raphael Warnock won uh, more than a hundred thousand margin, and Joe Biden had less than twelve thousand votes. So, people were voting split ticket. So, what is the you know? It could absolutely happen this time as well. And also remember the. The governor, uh, why, why am I forgetting his Brian name? Kemp. Uh, yep. Yeah, Brian Kemp. So Brian he's Kemp. very popular. So he did win in a, uh, I mean, I wouldn't say a landslide, but comfortably he won. Now in 2018, when there was a blue wave across the country, there was a very deeply contested election where he just won by like half a percent. That's and uh, uh, I forget the Democratic challenger, like she had refused, uh, uh, refused to concede the election but in 2022 they had hopes again to win the election and uh, they were at a much uh, comfortable win so i think the the conditions have changed quite a bit in the last two to four years where and i think divine uh, not divine sorry uh brian kemp like he had a very antagonistic relation even actually in the 2022 primary mm -hmm. the trump supported the opponent of brian kemp and like they had they were at loggerheads for a very long time but I think they have made up for the larger good of trying to get Trump elected. And uh, I think they are on the same side and that might help push the Trump over the edge. I mean, you know. So let's move to Pennsylvania because this is the most fascinating one from all of them, right? Yeah. So Pennsylvania, I'm going to show a little bit uh, history, right? So this is how the map of Pennsylvania looked. When versus, this is right where you see the Philadelphia area and then the cities, you know, you have the Pittsburgh area and stuff where Hillary Clinton did mildly well, but um, President Trump ran up the margins around and he carries the state by um, 40 plus thousand votes. Now, let me give you some perspective. Mr. Obama wins the state by over 300,000 votes. Look at where mm -hmm. uh, all the blue maps of blue. In 2008, the margin, the margin of Mr. Obama's win is even bigger. He wins by almost about 600,000 votes. You mm -hmm. see, uh, so many deep pockets of blue. Whereas in 2004, again, you know, George W. Bush loses the state to John Kerry as well. It's about less than, you know, 200,000 votes. It was only the last time, the last time the Republicans won the state probably was uh, before Trump did was, I think, 1988, I think. Senior Bush won it. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Senior Bush won it. And after that, you have seen consistent Democratic win. Now, one could argue that Ross Perot probably um, hampered uh, George Senior Bush's child. But, you know, that's a history lesson for uh, a later time. Um, but look, look at 2000, right? Again, Dick, uh, 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 George W. Bush and Dick Cheney losing the state by 200,000 votes. But Donald Trump appealed to the Midwest. And that's what switched the state from blue to red in almost 20 plus years, right? Cut to 2020, Joe Biden, also known as Scranton Joe or something. What was mm -hmm. he called? Yes, Is Scranton he, Joe. Yes, he flips the state back delivers it to uh, the Democrats by less than 100,000 votes, right? Not not a, mm -hmm. not a humongous margin, about 70,000, 80,000 votes, 1.2% of the vote. Um, again, getting these blue pockets, flipping a couple of them in the middle. Come to 2024, is this back in play or not? What do you think? Yeah, I think this is definitely in play. So, I mean, if you want to bring the map up, uh, I think like, uh, let me, so I mean, James Carville once famously remarked that this is basically 
Pennsylvania is P- P- Pittsburgh on one side, Philadelphia on other side, and Alabama in between. So, <laughs> <laughs> so I mean, but it's it's grown and uh, changed in character a lot. So uh, I, I think I want, like while you talk about that, I want to show a little bit about yeah. Pennsylvania. This is Pennsylvania three weeks ago. Harris plus four. Harris plus one. Only Atlas showing Trump plus three amongst all mm-hmm. the federal posters. This is Pennsylvania two weeks ago. Trump plus three. Emerson College suddenly starts Trump plus two. All these people are now showing Harris plus one or even. And this mm-hmm. is the fake. Harris plus one, YouGov. But now look at this. Plus one, yeah. even, yeah. plus one, yeah. plus two. In the last one and a half week, there is not a single credible poll, not a single credible poll that is showing Kamala Harris up. It is even, yep. or, and you can see that. Look at how the, it has crossed. This is where the election has swung. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. The election has swung in Pennsylvania. The gap was 49-47 in July uh, after when Harris took over. Then it became 49-47 in her favor in September. And now it's 49-48 in favor of Mr. Trump. And you and I both know the momentum that you get. I would not, I would not be amazed if this number hits 50%. Mm-hmm. So Mohan, your analysis now. Yeah, so uh, I want to just go back to the map uh, just to describe it better. So uh, as I, we see, I can, you, I can give you sharing privileges if you want to share. No, no, no. You can share. That's fine. No, no. Then, then no. But why don't you? Why don't you? Why don't you show? The... No, I don't have a map open, so I would just prefer if you okay. share. So if you don't mind. No problem. Yes. Any map will do. So just to give the viewers a bit of perspective. So as we see, like as we know that the Pittsburgh is on the western side of Pennsylvania. And Philadelphia is in the southeast. Now, vast the vast swaths of land in between are mostly rural. But if you see that blue in the southeast, that's actually your uh, Philadelphia. And the three, what worked for Biden was a couple of things. Uh, if you see the four counties, which are called the collar counties of Philadelphia, which is basically Bucks, I mean, going from like east uh, to west, Bucks, Montgomery, Delaware, and Chester. I think those were turned like a bit blue and okay. that's where uh, Biden got some of his uh, 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 margins and also I mean you can compare it later also with the previous election the northeast so if you see that uh, blue which is in the northeast like uh, which Lakwana county that's where uh, Scranton Joe or where Scranton is so I think what Biden did was he did well with the ancestral dams Especially the, uh, I mean, if you remember, Adi, this is a, this northeast Pennsylvania has a huge Catholic population, right. and Biden, being a Catholic, he overperformed with Catholics compared to other uh, Democratic candidates, and I think this is going. This is the challenge for both uh, uh, Trump and Kamala Harris that can they can she overperform in the northeast versus um, uh, Scranton Joe, who was more very popular. And can he also overperform versus what, 2016 in those scholar counties of Pennsylvania? I think that's where the election is going to come down to the Northeast versus the Southeast and who can do better to offset the possible losses. And I think this is like even like John Fetterman, the incumbent senator, and uh, Josh Shapiro, I think they have a much better connect with the rural ancestral Dems. Uh, when, when Mr. President, President Biden made the jaff about garbage and stuff. Josh Shapiro was live on CNN and he denounced the remarks on CNN live. <laughs> as, as, yeah, I mean, that's the, and I think like uh, Fetterman and Shapiro are, they have that kind of, it's hard to describe, like the connect with the uh, rural, the ancestral, the old, union. No, 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 no. They are old school Clinton Democrats. Yeah, they are, yeah, they, yeah. They are liberals, right? You you had an idea. They don't have hypocritical views on Israel and Palestine. They they yeah. have, they yeah. have perfectly know where who is liberal and who is, who is not liberal. And you know, uh, uh, and and John Fetterman and Josh Shapiro have John Fetterman especially has spoken up vocally about Israel and um, you know uh, their rights and so forth. So it's very interesting. Uh, uh, you know, a lot of. Uh, core base uh, of Democrats, I wouldn't even say core base, is with them. But the new sort of Democrat that where they're pandering to the far left, the folks that were with, you know, partly with Bernie Sanders or even the squad 
they are they are uh, disappointed but they don't they don't matter in these states and yeah they, i mean fetterman has gone to battle with many of the progressive left over uh, like some of the positions they have taken mm -hmm. so yeah i mean they are those as we say the old school ancestral democrats and i think that's why they do well uh in in a pennsylvania like which is more rural more non college educated mm -hmm. with the unions and stuff because they think they get they have a greater connect than a progressive like kamala harris i think that's going to be her challenge that can she overperform i think what uh biden did well was especially in the northeast corner and many in the rural counties he didn't he couldn't overturn like trump's margins a lot but uh what he did was he actually over uh reduce the margins like as you say like the 1000 vote what if you can shave off 5000 1000 votes here and there and i think he ended up winning comfortably in uh uh pennsylvania uh by like 80 84000 votes and i think if you bring the map up i want to show that the the, the bellwether county which is eerie which is by the lake in the northwest corner which went for trump in 2016 and which will which went for biden in 2020 so many people are saying like eri is the place to watch to see like what happens in uh, pennsylvania on election night correct it's in the uh, top left uh, no, no, corner no, 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 i'm putting it up it's basically this county right here yeah yeah and you see it's like a very light shade of i mean maybe the lightest shade of red possible and uh, can you keep that map up please so if you see uh so this is 2016 or 2020 this is 2020 so now i want you to focus 2016 yeah yeah so not only eri which is in the top left corner which are triangle protruding out but also see the two uh, eastern blue counties in the northeast and just see the color change when you come to 2020 yeah th so the one up top is like uh, uh lakwana that's where scranton is and where from joe biden is and now can you switch to 2020 and let's see the color difference so you see yeah. it's slightly darker shade of blue and this is flipped yeah and then eri has flipped this time around and so the other and 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 the southeast also if you see the i'm sure like the the collar counties the bucks chester all those would have also changed uh, the montgomery delaware and would it have is, changed it is, it is higher it is a higher shade of uh, it's a higher turnout in the philadelphia region also so you know it used to be actually no i will dispute that i think philadelphia was similar turnout but what used to happen earlier was philadelphia and pittsburgh used to give them like a 500k buffer margin mm -hmm. but no longer i think the rest of the sto uh, the what trump has been able to do is like turn out the low propensity voter mm -hmm. to offset that in 2016 obviously he failed i think where uh like like the detroit the atlantas mm -hmm. in 2020 they voted at the same rate as 2016 mm -hmm. maybe minutely right but that's like a uh, little bit to argue but what changed the election was the suburbs which changed the election for uh, biden versus trump he, yes because he appealed as a centrist right and that's yeah. the, and yeah. bill maher said this that kamala harris needs to have her sister soldier movement And, and stuff so the fourth state i want us to cover right now mm -hmm. is, is michigan and then maybe we'll cover the rest in our part 2 and stuff and uh, mm -hmm. you know do that so michigan is very interesting right michigan is uh, a state that again was not in play till donald trump came so before 2016 it was seen like the republicans cannot lose georgia um, and the democrats cannot lose michigan both have flipped since then both both have lost the state in one election and both are relatively similar in size so you could argue if one party grabs the on one and the other party grabs the other it's like a push and then they can fight because georgia has 16 electoral votes and michigan had 16 now it is 15 after mm -hmm. the census data but if the republicans pick up michigan then the democrats are really screwed because then they have to do all sorts of machinations and stuff like that to um, uh, come so let's talk to let's talk about the polls in michigan right and this is mean the most fun exercise for me because michigan is still showing a proper khichdi poll sarkar no one knows <laughs> what the hell is going on look at this emerson plus 1 suffolk even uh, susquehanna plus 5 beacon research even cnn plus 5 same day as atlas intel plus 1 maybe on a lighter note i can say this is like maharashtra polling right no one knows who's winning uh, m for michigan m for maharashtra 
the only problem is we are trying to figure out who is ajit pawar and who is sharad pawar here so, <laughs> but look at harris right she has 53 percentage point lead only four weeks ago that's slowly narrowing slowly narrowing it switches and now again yeah yeah one percent Right. I mean, at one point, RCP, like real clear politics, had Trump in the lead. But then I think one poll came out yesterday, and it again switched to like 0.1, 0.2 for Harris. I think this is the leftmost state. So when we see 2016 and 2020, obviously Trump won all three and lost all three in 2020 and won all three in 2016. But the 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 smallest margin, uh, uh, I mean, the the biggest margin that 2020 had seen was in Michigan, where I think he. uh lost by i think around 150 yeah, uh, won by about 10000 votes in 20 uh, 2016 right mm-hmm. and then in 2020 he um, uh, he essentially uh, loses michigan by almost um, 150000 votes right yeah and then around 2.8% margin so this is like the left so if you had to say like what is the best state for kamla harris of michigan so if she's losing michigan then probably it's going to be a bad night for her and they are in trouble elsewhere because this is like left this is the leftmost state uh, uh which is like tilting more towards i think and this is probably the hardest state for uh, was, trump to win exactly it was a part of the blue wall what was it called the blue wall of the yeah. uh, because, yeah. which was seen as michigan wisconsin um minnesota so all these states remained how they are new hampshire look at that it's not a part of the blue wall because it voted for mr bush um earlier and then you know you had pennsylvania as well as a part of blue wall but mr trump flipped all pennsylvania michigan and wisconsin and that is where the election uh, uh this basically the rust belt this is this is where he swung the election right he gets 306 mm-hmm. the uh what you mean is the candy or the ch- the icing with the cherry on top comes from these three states and and in michigan especially i think the democrats were just shocked because they no one thought no one in the right mind thought that the democrats could lose michigan mm-hmm. so we yeah. want to talk a little bit about michigan and what the curious uh, machinations are here this is yeah i think so yeah so i mean if you want to bring up the map i mean it's basically a lot about uh the detroit area where a lot of the vote comes from so basically it's like the oakland the macomb the wayne counties mm-hmm. uh where quite a bit and like this also has a significant the, uh, cnn results for 2020 actually sure no no go for it keep keep talking yeah. so uh, that's where the vote uh, mostly comes from and this is also a heavy industrial area like auto sector uh, is like heavily dependent and uh, Uh, we also have some college areas like lansing ann arbor uh, mm-hmm. which would be and this is also a uh, lot of uh, union union type areas and now this time a lot of the unions have either uh, uh, i mean mostly i would say like not nominated uh, or not endorsed anybody for president so it will be interesting to see michigan uh, and another dynamic is like the the muslim population like especially in certain parts of michigan they have a, a huge uh, influence like i think they are like around 80000 arab americans and right. they did hold a event with uh, trump who is like probably more pro israel than kamala harris for sure so it was kind of inter- and odd to see that uh, and, and and the funny part was there was actually a poll of arab americans in michigan where 40% went for trump 40% for kamala harris and 20 for jill stein so Uh, i think that that says a lot that there could be a huge fracture in the the muslim yeah. vote which yeah, might affect let's say a few thousand votes i was highlighting because this area look at that i was showing that how it's blue it's blue for the grand rapids and all that area but mm-hmm. now look at the house seat in the same area michigan 3 it's flipped from blue to so there is a lot of split ticket voting as well happening in michigan as well so don't uh, you know that's why i was showing between senate but these are the counties that mohan was talking about the wayne county the oakland county this is where the democrat margins run up and if she mm-hmm. fails and those now again the muslim american vote in michigan is also overblown because it's less than 100000 population yeah yeah so now even if 100% turnout happens which is not going to happen but if 100% right. turnout happens then also you are talking about a 40 50000 margin and how much were was going towards kamala harris so like say 40 50000 60000 out of that 10 20000 shifts one way 
So I think it's completely overblown as well. I think it is overblown because they want the Democrat Party to go further left if they lose Michigan and want to believe that, oh my God, we lost because of the Muslim vote. No, I think you have a very valid point that even I was thinking around the same lines that the 80,000, let's say even if 10,000 switch is not going to change the overall result. But let's say if it was a 2016 kind of result where 10,000 votes is the margin, then it might become a talking factor like, like, you know, in a one day match, like, you know, okay, maybe somebody didn't take an extra single, then it, I mean, when if you're losing by 10, 20 runs or if you're winning by five wickets, it doesn't matter, right? But if the run, if the match was lost on a very close basis, obviously everything is going to be scrutinized. So it could all come down to that. But I don't think, yeah, I agree. It's not a very big factor. I think it's the union vote, which way it will split is going to be a, like a big factor in Michigan. But this would be like the, I would the hardest state for Trump and the easiest state for Kamala. So I think she has to win this one and Pennsylvania, otherwise the, the job becomes very harder, especially in the Sun Belt down south. I, I completely agree. It becomes harder and harder. But um, I want to stop here at part one. We'll go, we'll go further in part two tomorrow in a couple of days and talk a little bit about North Carolina and stuff in Wisconsin. But uh, always fun. Any closing thoughts, Mohal, before we wrap up? No, I mean, it's just like a interesting election to watch. I know we still have to discuss on three more elections. So let's see. And, and trust me, the numbers will come, will be even crazier in 48 to 72 hours. Yeah, I mean, and then we have so many polls. Like, And I think there's a lot of herding also in the polling going like almost every poll is like within one or two. So we don't know whether it's actually going to be like that or is it just like they're just herding at this moment. I, like all the one thing. This is a this is the closest election I've seen here in a long, long time. And we are probably going to be up in the night till 2 or 3 a.m. in the morning looking at all the numbers. So but we'll be here discussing, uh, uh, going in detail and uh, talking about it. Um, thank you so much, Mohan, for joining. Thank you, folks, for joining. We'll be back with more. Don't go anywhere. Uh, just wait a few hours and we'll be back with three more states and uh, our national pictures and stuff. Till then, like, share, subscribe, follow us on our social media handles and uh, let us know in the comments what do you think about our analysis. Till then, it's goodbye.